Hello. Well, hello. Would this be Ryan from the band Mother Mother? Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, it's Scott. I'm calling from the interview show. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing great. What are you up to? Oh, nothing too exciting. Um, just cleaned up my father's kitchen, to be exact. I'm a so yearning on Quad Island, the Gulf Island on which I grew up for two weeks here, and staying at my dad's house and just made a mess and cleaned it up. Are you ready for an interview? Yeah. Okay, I was a little bit intimidated because when I've seen you do interviews on the internet, you often have your arms crossed and your legs crossed. Was that intimidating? Well, it shows that you're a little bit closed in terms of posture. Ah. Hmm. Interesting observation. Yeah, I mean, I never knew there was a direct correlation between posture and how much one is willing to divulge. But uh, now that you mention it, that makes sense. Body language is everything. Totally. So what can we do to loosen you up over the phone? Um, I, I don't know if I particularly need loosening up, so... Awesome. All right. In a moment, we're going to listen to, of course, The Stand. So, as I bring up the music, would you love to say a few things about the song? Um, sure, yeah. It's uh, track two of our most recent release, Eureka. And, um, yeah, it says, I'd say it's the most misleading track on the album. Hey, this is Ryan from Mother Mother, and you're listening to The Interview Show. But a secret Oh, come on, just one bite Okay, it's vodka on ice But then there's women on bikes Oh, just the women who straddle Oh, now you are a handful I forgot about handfuls It's everyone here You mean just all of the people? Yeah, and all of their peers And all of their pets And their chandeliers And their cigarettes I haven't smoked in years I can hardly stand the sight Of it all I can hardly stand the sound Of it all I can hardly stand the taste Of it all and they don't even know. <laughs> Welcome to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host, and today I'm lucky enough to have Ryan from the band Mother Mother on the line. Hi, Ryan. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you, Scott? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, we just heard The Stand, and that is a really, really great tune. And I was wondering, we've just heard the last two lines of the song. Could you explain those or expand upon that a little bit? 
Um, yeah, well, that's um, not a literal sentiment. It's more like everybody is, um, I guess everybody is out to lunch is, is the meaning behind that. Would you ever record a work safe version saying everybody's out to lunch? Um, maybe if there was a lot of money involved, but artistically it doesn't have quite the same ring. Absolutely not. I I vote you do not do that. Me too. <laughs> cool. That's my vote. Cool. All right. Also in the song, you talk about your vice being women who straddle, and I was wondering if you could tell me about the last time you got to enjoy that particular vice. Um, the last time. Well, this is, this is, uh, is that hard to recall? Jesus. Um, that wasn't so long ago. It was, it was nice, as it usually is. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, I Heard the Stand was written while you were waiting for the bus. So, th- does this mean that Vancouver fans, or everybody in Vancouver, your hometown, if they see you on the street, they can hear you humming tunes to the next record? Uh, yeah, that is something I catch myself doing, and I'm sure, um, for those around me, catch, catch me doing as well. I have a bad habit, or a good habit, a habit nonetheless of being kind of lost in a melody, whether I'm commuting or driving or even having a conversation with people. It can be a rude habit at times. Cool. Can you tell me about the last time you were interrupted? And that was probably about five minutes ago when you called. Uh-oh. No, no, it's, it's good. There's a wave of uh, creativity right now. It can be disrupted. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear it. So you're on Quadra Island right now, and you and your sister, who's also in the band, you guys come from Quadra Island, born and raised. So I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about Quadra Island for those people who don't really understand what it is. Uh, yeah, it's a northern Gulf Island in between the mainland and Vancouver Island. It uh, is home to about 3,000 people in the off season and 3,500 in the summertime. Uh, I'd say the main the main driving industry here is the fish plant, which is called Walcan. And um, yeah, it's very very pretty. There's nice lakes and a uh, a popular touristic landmark called Rebecca Spit. And, um, yeah, I th- the island is kind of an interesting mix of bohemia and working-class folk. And uh, more of these days, it's, it's starting to border on a corporate quality, being that properties are going up and rich retirees are flocking to such paradise school places as Quadra and other Gulf Islands. But growing up, it was a bit more free of that. And uh, looking back, I feel pretty lucky. But obviously, while I was growing up, I didn't realize the good thing I had, which is always the case. Yeah, I'm going to jump in and say, if I was going to use shorthand to describe Quadra Island to my friends, I'd say maybe hippie retreat. I mean, maybe that might not describe it now, but certainly a couple of years ago, you could definitely describe it that way. Yeah, sure. That works. As someone who was born in BC as well, Quadra Island's a very unique place, and I was hoping that we could talk a little bit about how that might have shaped your music. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure that it did. I mean, I don't like to write about um, the place, and, uh, you know, I don't, there's not like a big nautical theme in the music, uh, although I guess there is in some songs. But no, I think my writing really just comes from the place within. Or just from um, some observational sense of dealing with people in the world. Or even my fantasies, morbid or otherwise, of human interaction. I'm really not a very um, uh, uh, anecdotal writer. Very fictitious. Hey, my name's Ryan from Mother Mother, and you are listening to The Interview Show. Turn around your life, the real change without your consent, without your okay. It happened again, I woke up today and everything changed. All my friends and now all my family suddenly don't understand me, understand I'm not the man they think I am. Try chasing it down, try chasing it down. Favorite waitress, favorite place It's up in flames, it's up for sale It doesn't 
from Mother Mother and you're listening to the interview show and chasing it down uh, I'd say it's our most progressive rock track to date and uh, because of this journey I think it's a, a band favorite to listen to and to play live so your record it's called Eureka you've said the title came from writing a record writing the record as an aha moment. So I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about what that means as an artist, because this is your third record. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, we kind of felt like we hit upon our stride with the record and uh, felt grounded artistically and and also with the, with the personnel, Jasmine coming into the fray and really tying things together on a, on a social front. Um... Yeah, the the phase of time in which this record was being written and conceptualized and then ultimately made and produced felt like, yeah, um, somewhat of an epiphany for us in that, like, okay, yeah, we, we're clear and confident about what we're doing. But to be three albums in, I mean, having making music as your job, to have a, like, a eureka moment must be a powerful thing. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, life feels very gradual. I mean, it's hard to say that any Eureka moment is truly one in terms of how they're defined. It's in retrospect that I think we we uh, we we tell ourselves we had them. It's like okay, looking back, I see how that was that was um, a pocket of time where everything changed on a dime, you know, but during that supposed change, I probably was just, you know, undergoing the throes of what always feels like a gradual existence. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right, I'm going to change gears a little bit. I heard a rumor that you wear women's underwear, so I wanted to know how that affects your strut on stage. Ah, uh, you know, it's good, all, the, all these tight pants one has to wear in the, uh, indie rock field um yeah the smaller the ginch i find the more nimble the uh the rock moves for sure so when you meet other guys do you recommend they do that i try and do that as little as possible <laughs> good answer I, I keep it to the phone you know <laughs> fair enough fair enough so I've read that you started writing instrumentals when you started writing music, and then you switched over to lyrics. So I was hoping that you could talk a little bit about the change. Uh, the change was born in in uh, music school when I was studying jazz. And, um, yeah, growing up and in being involved in music and learning and studying, I just imagined myself as an instrumentalist or, you know, a real heavy guitar player. That was kind of my 
uh, musical aspirations, just to be one of those virtuosic types. And, um, yeah, it was in my second year of jazz school that the uh, the art of the short, lyric-driven pop song uh, happened upon me. And um, I just changed gears because I, I got a little bit more out of that. It felt like you were able to be um, truly original in that format. And the idea of better or worse was quite subjective in in the field of songwriting because, you know, in the cerebral landscape of music, if someone has a bigger vocabulary, then you then that's just a fact. You can't really refute that. But um, when you're writing songs, your own spin on, on that form is is truly yours. And I don't think it can really be bettered based on the subjectivity of that. And so what I'm trying to say is when I was aspiring to be um, like a shredder on the guitar, I just kind of got the sense that there's always going to be someone better than me, you know, who spent more time in their closet practicing scales and uh, getting a grip on that side of things. So it felt like, a, yeah, an avenue to be wholly original and, uh, and yeah, free of that competitive spirit. But then after all getting into the, the business of making records and selling them and, you know, it gets pretty competitive as well. Hey, my name's Ryan from Mother Mother and you are listening to The Interview Show.
is Ryan from Mother Mother, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Uh, all right, well, Baby Don't Dance is a song that uh, was written in Dawson City for the Dawson City Music Festival. Part of the magic about Mother Mother is the guy-girl girl vocals. The two girls in your band have very specific voices, so I wondered if you could talk about writing for those voices. Well, I think the thing I most keep in mind is is the range. These days, it's the range. And and uh, just trying to make the parts um, comfortable. And, and I've kind of gotten out of the habit of writing, you know, specific parts for them and, and more so allowing uh, their ideas to... To um, things, and uh, so what? Which I, to be a byproduct of their own instincts, in meaning that they, you know, they write their own parts. I, I write a melody, and you know, I'll, I'll give it to them and say, you know, what, what are you feeling? Like, where are you hearing yourselves in the mix here? And um, one way I, I find to uh, assure that the ranges are going to be comfortable is is just where I'm singing my part. And uh, if my part's too high for me, then it, chances are once you get that third harmony, that fifth above or sometimes an octave above, it's going to be way too high for the girls. So I think a little bit like that. Nice. Nice. All right. You're listening to The Interview Show. This is Scott Wood, your host. Today we've been lucky enough to have Ryan from the band Mother Mother on the show. As we end the show, Ryan, I'd like to get the guest to pick a song of theirs and talk a little bit about it as I bring up the music. I'm going to ask that you pick an older song because I'm going to play some new songs off the record today, but an older song so that people can sort of hear where you guys have come from. Sure, yeah. I'll pick Ball Cap off our first record. And um, I choose this song because it's definitely one of my favorites that I've ever written. And um, it just really reminds me of that that change of paths, that veering of getting off course of the, uh, you know, the, the cerebral music, musical approach. And because uh, I think this was, you know, really the first Mother Mother song that was brought to the table and and working it out and, and finding those harmonies and discovering, I guess, the sound via this song was was a real magical experience, one that definitely brings up a lot of nostalgic feelings all right we're gonna hear ball cap by mother mother hey my name's ryan from mother mother and you are listening to the interview show i like the tree tops cause they're reaching just like me and i'm tied up in knots like the brambles and the weeds i am the rooster the You know that beauty is only skin deep. Well, baby, baby, come on and skin me. I like the pickings only cause they make me look real thin. Yeah. Like the 
the tree tops Cause they're reaching just like me And I am tired of them not Like the brambles and the weeds I am the rooster 